Hello everybody, Ryan here with Product Impressions, and today we are checking out a new laptop from HP, the oh-so-elegantly named 14DQ3000DX. This is meant to be a fairly budget laptop. By fairly, I mean extremely. Very inexpensive, 14-inch screen, 64GB uh, uh, solid-state drive, eMMC, uh, only 4 gigs of RAM, and it's running Windows 11 Home in S mode. So this is kind of Windows trying to compete with Chromebooks. I have never been impressed with a Chromebook. They've always struck me as baby's first computer to get used to using a laptop before you buy an actual one that can run real software instead of just crap from an app store. But in any case, uh, we're going to pop this open, see what we can actually do with it. Maybe I can edit a video. Maybe I can play a game. Uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, I've been using this uh, little laptop for about a week or so, and I must say, I am not impressed. Uh, I never thought that I would say a Chromebook is a better option, but yikes. Um, so apparently, Windows S is essentially Windows sandboxed. You can only do things that uh, Microsoft will allow you to do through their store. So if you have ever stored a password in Google Chrome or anything like that, uh, you won't be able to access that through this computer. You cannot install Google Chrome. You cannot install any other browsers. You are limited to Microsoft Edge. Uh, you are limited entirely in the apps that you can use to what is available in the Windows App Store. On a Chromebook, that's not as big of a deal. I mean, it's still not great, but this suffers from all of the same problems as a Chromebook. You are limited to essentially what they will allow you to have from their own personal App Store. In the case of a Chromebook, there's at least a reasonable number of options for things. Here, you can get some really cheap video games and some really cheap productivity software. If you want an intro to video editing, you can use Microsoft's Clip Champ, what have you. Uh, but if you want to do anything, anything beyond incredibly basic, rudimentary stuff, you will have to unlock Windows, which is buying a separate key to actually install the full Windows. Um, another problem with that is the hardware is very cheap. Uh, I mean, the build quality here is yikes, but uh, I mean, it's, it's HP, it's well put together, but all of the materials are super cheap. Um, I, I have seen Chromebooks that are dramatically nicer, but uh, God, where was I even going with that? Uh, the sound quality is not amazing. It doesn't have the capability of even streaming low quality video without it sputtering. Uh, I mean, not constantly, thankfully. It, it, it takes a few minutes for it to actually sputter, but invariably, if you are watching even something in 480p off of YouTube, it's going to sputter, the image is going to freeze, the sound will drop out. Um, oh, yeah, what I, where I was actually going with that. Um, all of this is indicative that this machine does not have the capability to reliably run even this limited version of Windows. So if you were to get the full version of Windows, I don't think this machine could actually really run it. I mean, it might do okay. You can do web browsing, word processing. I would not trust this for anything beyond that. You're doing more than writing basic emails or online shopping. This is not the machine for you. The audio quality is not great. I mean, no laptop has amazing audio quality anymore, but this is like thin and tinny and it, it's just not great. The, the screen is very low resolution, very pixelated. I mean, it's not a glossy screen, so you can see it from different angles. I guess that's good. The one thing that I will say for the build of this is the actual surface where you put your hands when you are using it, this is a nicer plastic. I mean, it, it, feels okay. It has a nice little like grain to it. Beyond that, uh, yeah, no, there is nothing good to say about this. Um, when you look at the keyboard closely, I don't know if it's going to pick up on the camera, but it looks like the entire keyboard is curved. That is actually 
a design intention of this, apparently. It looks like the entire thing is kind of like bowed upwards, but that's because there is a very slight decline here that makes it look like the keys are actually flush with the plastic on the outside edges and then bow up in the middle. I mean, it's, it's flat because the case itself bows downward instead, but if you hold a ruler across it, you can tell. Otherwise, just looking at this, it looks messed up. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see. The actual case of this is, I mean, it is a flat, white, slightly grained plastic. This looks like the cheapest plastic they could have found. I mean, it, it does not seem great. That extends all the way around. HP does tend to use these uh, bar uh, bar bumpers on here so that you're not going to like scrape something or what have you. And I guess that is nicer than having the little circles on each corner. But uh, yeah, that is about the only design aesthetic that they took from any of their more high-end things. Uh, rather than there being an indentation, the frame around the screen juts out here so that you can kind of get your fingernail underneath it to open it up. Um, if this is textured all the way around in a way that I'm guessing it's meant to look nice, but to my eye, it looks cheap. When you're starting this thing up, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for it to even get to this, uh, you know, uh, unlock screen. And if you were to get a Chromebook, it, I mean, I'm not thrilled with those, but at least for a first computer, it will run things smoothly. Now that Microsoft has Word and Excel and PowerPoint available as apps through the Google App Store, just go with it with a Chromebook. I mean, you, you would still have to spend money on a subscription if you wanted anything beyond basic online editing with this. So why not just get something that can actually run its own operating system reasonably well? Uh, other areas where uh, this is cheap, I mean, it, it looks like it has a nice array of ports here. You've got a headphone port, a USB-C, a uh, USB, uh, you know, standard USB ports, an HDMI port. The problem here is that if you want to actually use this in anywhere, any capacity beyond standard plug in the computer, it, it's really hard. Power has to come through its dedicated power jack. Even though this is a USB-C, it looks like it could connect to a dock. It can connect to a dock. If this thing can barely run its own operating system, it's not gonna power external displays very well. And part of the purpose of having a dock is that it runs the power as well as connecting peripherals. This thing cannot take power. So you still have to have multiple cords plugged in and plug in, unplug, all of that. On the other side, you've got a full-size SD card reader. I guess that's nice. Um, very few things actually use full-size SD cards anymore, except for high-end cameras, or not necessarily even high-end cameras, but uh, very nice cameras will do. But if you have a very nice camera, why are you buying something that is this cheap? Like, I, 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 I am baffled by this machine and who this is actually for. And I, I can only say, I guess Microsoft is trying to muscle in on Chromebooks use in the education field, which I mean, sure, I guess Google gets kids started using Chrome that way, but it, to try and do this to make people use a less convenient browser, that is the only reason why I can think that this exists. Um, yeah, if you are looking at this machine, I never thought that I would say this because I don't like Chromebooks, but just get a Chromebook instead. At least it can run its own operating system and other other like core functionality without sputtering. Yikes. Um, okay, uh, hopefully this has been of some help to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Otherwise, like, share, subscribe. I will see you next time.